Turn with us to Mark 14. Somebody's thinking, my God, I'd hate to know he had notes. How long he'd preach then? I got notes right here. It's a built-in notepad. Holy Ghost. Mark 14, verses 3. Now, this story right here is always just really meant a lot to me. Mark 14, I hadn't preached from it in years. As a matter of fact, probably four years ago, under my tent in Nashville, Georgia. I remember when I actually read it. Mark 14, verse 3. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leopard, wow, somebody said Jesus was in the house of a man who was a leopard. Nobody would be around a leopard in this day. Remember, they had to communicate them. Ain't that like Jesus? Church, turn your way. Jesus won't. Leprosy was often really symbolic of sin and how it eats and decays and destroys. Amen. Thank God he's a friend of sinners. Wow. Luke 15 and 2. People can give up on you, but there's Jesus. He's in the house of Simon the leper, and as he sat at meat, or sat at eating with him, dining with him, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, of spike and arm, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on her head, on his head. Wow. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why wow, was this waste of ointment made? And if you'll look over in John 12 sometime, it'll tell you who. Verse 4 of Mark 14 is saying how some said it was actually Judas that held the money back. Amen. The treasurer of Jesus' ministry. Somebody shout, if you ain't got at least one Judas hanging around your church, your church ain't one. Jesus had one. <laughs> he was saying in John 6 and verse 71, uh, Jesus said, I've chosen 12 of you and one of you are a devil. Jesus didn't choose devils. Remember that next time you see somebody fool with them. And um, Judas is saying, why is this waste of the oil made? In other words, she's wasting the oil. Verse 5 said, for it had been, it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and had been given to the poor and they murmured against her. He wasn't worried about the poor. He's wondered, he worried about how much he's going to be able to dip into his own pocket. And Jesus said, let her alone. Aren't you glad how Jesus said, let her alone? In other words, when Jesus said, let her alone, he was saying, the old ain't wasted. We're always looking to Jesus to anoint us. But right here, we find a woman that's anointing him. You just don't always be the anointed, or do you want to be remembered for being the anointer? See, the anointed is the one always, give me God, give me God. But the anointer is the one always giving to God, giving to God. Some people, that's their mentality. All they come to church for is to get something from God. But then there's others. They come to church to give something to God. I don't want to just be the one recipient of his power, his anointing. I want to be the one, come on somebody, pouring out to him. Wow. The devil will tell you your oil's wasted, but Jesus says, shut up, devil, let them alone. Look at your neighbor and say, no matter. How it looks. The oil is never wasted. Your worship is never wasted. Your work and labor in Him is never wasted. Your praying in His name by faith is never wasted. Your attendance to His house and obeying Him when you come, it's never a waste. Jesus is sitting at a table eating, and this woman walks in. Break. Can you imagine that? You sitting there eating your steak. And I'm just getting modern with eating, dining with somebody. Here comes this crazy one. She takes her body and breaks it over his head. Sometimes we read the Bible and don't see what we're reading. She walks in with a box of alabaster on my box filled with oil, walks up to Jesus and goes, and it just breaks and runs all over the place, all over the table, all on his food, everywhere. And Jesus said, there, look at her wasting that. That's a whole year's worth of wages. My God, it took her a whole year to pay for that. She's wasting it. Well, Jesus said, leave her alone. He said, why do you trouble her? She has wrought a good work on me. See, here's the difference. 
There's people that want to always come to Christ and they want Him to do a work for them. Do something for me. Do something for me. This is not her mentality. This is not what she's about to be remembered for. She's being remembered for what she does toward Him. What would happen if folks really come to church because they wanted something they had, they want to do for Him? But that ain't the majority's mentality. I'm coming to church to get my blessing. That's what everybody else says. Come get my blessing. Come to get my look at your neighbor and say, change yourself and come to be one. If all you come to church for is to get something from God, you'll always be sitting around. Hey man, go to God as the sideline saints and the bleacher brothers do. Waiting and watching, waiting and watching. Hallelujah. But if you like Jacob, you'll grab Esau by the heel and say, excuse me, I ain't waiting on nobody. I come here for him, not you. And if you don't move, well then you lose. Snooze and lose if you want to. But I'm going after God now. I'm here for him. Yeah. Not just here to get something from him. Yeah, sure. I'm here for him. She busts through the door and breaks this box open. Oil's all in the room. Solomon Solomon 1, 12 prophesies this. Solomon says, uh, amen, the king sits at his table and listen to what the Shumanite woman said, and my spikenard, the smell, fills the room thereof. This was what Mary was doing. It was symbolic of worship, her praise, her perfume. She was breaking her best over God. She was giving God her best. You're going to be remembered for giving God tips. You're going to be remembered for going to church and doing your little, amen, religious thing on Sunday. Are you going to be remembered when your life's over that that person, they, him or her, they gave God their best. In other words, they gave God their A-L-L, their all. Or did you just be remembered for giving God some? Come on, she's about to be memorial. Moralize, not for giving God a little, not for surrendering some, but for surrendering her all, giving her best to God. He said, you got to pour with you always. Whensoever you will, you may do good unto them. But me, you have not always. He was prophesying his death on the cross. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Very or truly, I say unto you, this Jesus, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. You realize what Jesus prophesied just come to pass one more time today because I mentioned it. Amen. Every time a preacher preaches today, it's prophecy Jesus may mention it. And he, it was a personal one about her. Wherever my gospel is preached, why did he say wherever the gospel is preached? Because this is the gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. John 3, 16. Greater love hath no man than this and a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15, 13. The gospel is the son of God laying down his life to receive us. This woman laid her life down to receive his. A woman entering in to Simon's house, though being a leopard, he was a religious leader. If, if, if a woman of her caliber, just a woman herself in that, if she had walked in there and done what we see her doing, if Jesus hadn't been in there, she'd have lost her life. According to their custom, they took her outside of town and stoned her to death. You know what? When she went in there, she had death on her mind. I'm about to lose my life. And I'm about to give him my everything. I'm about to give him my best. Man, Jesus didn't even bring up, besides John the Baptist, none of the apostles, nobody else. He, he didn't tag to their ministry or their great miracle ministries and great messages they preached. Nothing about being remembered. One woman. Walked in a house saying, excuse me, you might kill me. It'll be worth dying for. Yes, yes, yes. I'm about to give him my best. Go. Somebody shout, she was willing to lay down her life. She was willing to lay down her life. Jesus said, wherever my gospel's preached about me laying down my life for the world, we'll have to mention her too, seeing she was so willing to give up her best just to have me. That's what I want my memorial to be. I want my memorial to be as Jacob's, the Lord God. 
when Marvin's name's mentioned in the future and the Lord, God have mercy, tarries and hadn't come and I leave this world. I pray every time my name's mentioned, Jesus has to be brought up. Oh, it often does, even now. Wow. Do you realize Joshua's name? In, in the Hebrew is Yeshua. It's the, it's the same as Jesus. Hello? His name. Somebody say his name. His name. Man, say. His name. Praise God. I read that one day and I was reading about Joshua and how he was uh, leading the people of God over Jordan and watching the Ark of the Covenant, the glory of God moving. He was saying, let's go after it. Go after it. And I thought about his name, Joshua. Look at that. I said, Lord, have mercy. What a testimony. The mention of his name makes you think about the one he's after. He said, Lord, that's what I want to be remembered for. Marvin's name is brought up. Jesus quickly has to be mentioned somewhere. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Remembered for holding on. Remembered for giving him my all. What you going to be remembered for? You're preaching your funeral right now.